do a little bit of a deeper dive into what happened with Mauricio's $32 million fraud scheme case. Okay, we have been covering this. I'm going to get into the um, specifics of it. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts on what I think really happened. Okay. So before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. So this is according to Radar Online. It says, Dancing with the Stars hunk Mauricio Umansky has waltzed himself out of a bombshell lawsuit over his controversial $32 million mansion purchase. Developer Sam Hakeem filed a motion in Los Angeles Superior Court requesting to dismiss the long-running multi-million dollar lawsuit accusing Cal Richards' estranged husband of allegedly defrauding the U.S. government in the eyebrow-raising real estate deal. Okay, now I want you guys to remember a couple of things. This was a case about defrauding the U.S. government. Keep that in your mind, okay? That's a big, big deal. Keep that in your mind. This case has also been going on for four years. Keep that in your mind too. These are, when we get to the conspiracy theories, these points will matter, okay? Now, let's keep going. The request to dismiss the case was filed on December 7th with prejudice, a legal term that prevents Hakeem from refiling the claim once the judge ends the legal scum. The legal situation. I don't know why they call it scum. That is also something to note that he is dismissing it with prejudice, which basically just means he cannot refile the lawsuit at a later date. That is also important. Okay. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Natasha says not hunk. I know. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, you guys. Umansky was sued by Hakeem for allegedly ignoring their $40 million bid to purchase the seized home of Teodoro Negum Obiang Maneg. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The sticky fingered son of the president of the oil rich African nation who was caught embezzling millions. Okay, so what that basically means is that Teodoro is the son of. Um, uh, oil-rich African president, the president was caught embezzling millions. His son was also shady as hell. And so they got in trouble. And so the government, the U.S. government, then said, hey, Mauricio and your agency and your partners, you sell this property that they have, this multi-million dollar Malibu mansion. And with the profit of that, that portion of the profit needs to go back to paying the government, you know, our fees and our... um." judgments against these people who were caught embezzling money. See what I'm saying? So Umansky was contracted by the U.S. Department of Justice to sell the Malibu spread, but instead purchased it himself with partner Mauricio Oberfield. The duo then resold the mansion for nearly $70 million a year later, netting a tidy $37 million profit. You guys understand that is fraud. Uh, I'll say allegedly, okay? Allegedly. Allegedly, that's fraud. <laughs> you don't disclose to the to the person who is selling the, the home that you are purchasing it as the agent. And then you also did not disclose all of the offers. You wanted to lowball it because you wanted to then flip it for a higher price, okay? So that's, let's just say alleged because we're talking about legal things here and the and in my conspiracy theory, I go very deep in it. So let me just cover all the bases, okay? So filed in 2019, the lawsuit sparked a ferocious pretrial battle between lawyers after it was revealed that both Umansky and Hakeem were allegedly withholding or unable to find text messages legally detrimental to both cases. You guys remember that too. This is allegedly over text messages, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to scooch over to this slide because there's a really important point that I'm going to come back to, okay? 
A furious Los Angeles Superior Court judge, Mark H. Epstein, ordered both parties to produce the required discovery material by mid-December, which may have led to the decision to resolve the case. Given the fact that each party has now made representations to the court that the court has found to be misleading and potentially deliberately so, the parties might want to think a long time before bringing more discovery motions, Judge Epstein stated in October. Discovery motions, okay? So discovery means in in law, discovery is like the the receipts. You know, that's what discovery is. It's it's the documentation, it's the screenshots, it's the phone calls, it's the records, you know, it's video footage. Like so when someone says we need discovery in a lawsuit, that is the receipts, okay? So he's basically saying like you need to think about bringing before we move forward in this you need to think about any receipts you're going to bring that's what the judge is saying okay why would a judge say that noodle on that because i'm going to get to that point oberfield's renowned attorney jeremiah t reynolds told writer online in a statement that his client and this is very important he says that his client did not pay sam hakeem a dime to settle his frivolous case we're going to get back to that point, too. Sam McKeem voluntarily dropped his lawsuit under threat of court-ordered sanctions for his failure to turn over text messages that demonstrated his case never should have been filed, the legal eagle added. It is unfortunate that our system can be exploited for years to tarnish the reputations of completely innocent defendants like my clients without any consequence. Okay. Okay. So if you are not a candy cane, and you're not a critical thinker, and you haven't been following this story, you might think, oh my gosh, Mauricio and his partner are completely, you know, vindicated. This guy, Sam Hakeem, filed this frivolous lawsuit against them. You know, he can't produce the receipts. Wow, they are so vindicated. You know, oh my gosh, they didn't pay him anything to dismiss the case. So he must have been lying. There must have been no fraud. Eh. But I'm going to preface the next part of this very, very clearly. This is a conspiracy theory. This is my opinion on what I think actually happened. I want to make that very, very clear. This is all alleged. This is theoretical. This is an opinion. But using my candy cane critical thinking hat, this is what I think actually happened. Okay. I don't think it's a coincidence that last week or a couple days ago, we were talking about how Mauricio and his legal teams were attempting to shield the names of the secret investors. Okay. So Mauricio Umansky and his partner, Mauricio Overfield, were both being sued. Right. However, Baked into the lawsuit would be every single person who invested in the buying of the Malibu mansion. So Mauricio and Mauricio didn't buy it outright themselves with their money. They had investors, like a lot of rich people do, not even rich, just a lot of people do in general. They pool their resources together to buy the property. And then once they flip the property, they then divide the, the profits accordingly, right? So do we think it's a coincidence, in my Nene voice, is it a coincidence that literally the moment that the secret investors' names are threatened to be made public, all of a sudden, the, the lawsuit is now frivolous, all of a sudden, um, Sam Hemkeem wants to dismiss it, all of a sudden, he can't produce, quote, receipts? I don't think so. Now, let's go through the article also from Radar Online, talking about that. And then I'm going to break down the two theories that I have of what happened, okay? So here we go. So these are my, these are this is my discovery. These are my receipts. So this was an exclusive from Radar Online. It said, Mauricio Umansky pleaded with the court to prevent the names of the investors involved in his controversial $32 million mansion purchase from being released, okay? Can exclusively reveal details of his desperate bid. Side note, I also want you to note how 
now in this article, which came out before the other article, they're calling it a desperate bid. They're saying it's controversial. Very, very different to the language in the article we just read. Now it's, oh, it's a frivolous lawsuit. His lawyer is amazing. Like, it's really funny how the tone of how Radar Online is talking about the lawsuit and about the lawyers and about these people has shifted. The, the first article was way more glowing and positive, and this one's more like, yeah, it's a desperate bid, right? A Los Angeles Superior Court judge recently granted a motion filed by the Dancing with the Stars hunk, or they're still calling him the hunk, to seal court documents revealing the names of the investors implicated in the money-making deal. Described by one angry developer in a lawsuit as an alleged fraud. See? Kyle Richards' estranged husband was sued by the developer and realtor for allegedly ignoring their $40 million bid to purchase the C's homes of Teodoro. And as we know, he's the sticky finger, the sticky fingered son of the president of the oil rich African guy who was embezzling millions. We all know that. Umansky was con was contracted by the U.S. Department of Justice to sell the Malibu spread, but instead purchased it in himself with partner Mauricio Overfield. The duo then resold the mansion for nearly $70 million a year later, netting a tidy $37 million profit. I know we already went over that point, but it bears repeating. They got a $37 million profit. That's a lot of coins. Okay. Court documents revealed Dumansky and Oberfield convinced others, these are these quote secret investors, to contribute money to the scheme that unfolded between 2016 and 2017. In a desperate bid to get the case tossed, Umansky's team also filed a motion to seal portions of the exhibits revealing the names of the so-called passive secret investors claiming he wants to protect their privacy. You're, you're, you're damn right he wants to protect his privacy, their privacy because he also wants to protect himself. I'm pretty sure that these passive investors, secret investors, are very powerful people are very influential people, are very wealthy people, and are probably very ruthless people. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Mauricio Umansky is a ruthless person. From everything we've heard about him, all of the cheating, um, the way he alleged him and Kyle allegedly stole Kim's house from her, um, all of the fraud cases he's had, you know, this is just one of many. There's a ruthlessness to that. The way he... Um, screwed over Rick Hilton. He's a very ruthless person. And ruthless business people deal with other ruthless business people. So he's in bed with very ruthless people. Okay. So I'm sure he wants to also protect himself. Now, Let's talk about the judge. So Judge Mark H. Epstein agreed to temporarily hide their names following a November 17th, 2023 hearing where he ordered Umansky and the plaintiff's developer, Sam Akeem, and realtor Aiton Siegel to file more robust legal briefs in favor or opposed to exposing the investors. After all, the court has some doubt as to whether the names of the investors are all that critical to the motion or opposition. And if that is correct, the court might grant the motion in that respect. This is very important. So the judge was saying whether the names of the investors are critical to the motion or opposition, if it's correct, the court might grant the motion in that respect. So he's saying if the investors' names, i.e. who they are, is critical to this fraud case, then they will be made public. If they are not critical to the fraud case, then they won't be made public. That's important to my theories, okay? But the court is not sure of that. Defendants have, a, have already suggested that all of the investors were mere passive investors, although that was at least arguably not the case. It's definitely not the case, and I do think it's very, very, very important. Not the case, okay? The judge also indicated the parties may be trying to hammer out a deal that may hinge on keeping the names of the investors out of the spotlight. This is also very critical. 
Okay. So prior to the article we just read about it being dismissed, the judge seems very level headed. The judge is like, listen, the parties might be hammering out a deal, you know, with the bargaining ship. Listen, if we keep the investors' names private, then we'll hammer out some deal with you. But that would mean that the public, quote, public, and legally, it would mean that the investors and Mauricio and Mauricio would have been guilty of fraud. You know, they may have had some deal, they may have done something, but it would imply at least the implication would be, yes, it was fraud. And you got a settlement to go away. So on paper, that doesn't look good. See what I'm saying? Okay. Because that's also very important about what does it actually look like on paper. Okay. So the judge, again, seemed very level-headed, you know, put in your motions each side in this article. But the previous article, it was a very angry judge. And he was like, don't think twice about bringing your receipts to the court and blah, 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 blah. I wonder why the judge changed his tune. Okay. As to the settlement, the court will need to better understand what the nature of the privacy right is, other than that the parties would just like to keep their document confidential. And the court is not even sure of that, as not all of the properties to the settlement have been weighed in on the motion he wrote in court documents. The case is ongoing. Okay, so the judge is extremely level-headed so far. Then all of a sudden, in the other article, he's angry and, you know, this case is frivolous and you better think twice about bringing more discovery. Why would the judge flip like that? I have a couple of theories. I said it before. I'll say it again. These are theories. These are opinions. Okay. Theory number one. In my opinion, like I said, I do think that these secret investors are ruthless people. They are well-connected and they are very powerful and they have a lot of money. You're buying a $40 million Malibu mansion. You're flipping it and you're making a $37 million profit. So clearly they've done this before. Clearly they have the money and the means. These are very ruthless, connected people. So my theory number one is that these secret investors paid off, and I'm going to say it again, this is my opinion, and or threatened the people who are suing Mauricio and his partner. That would be Sam Hakeem and that would be um, Aiton Seagal. And my second theory is that the secret investors paid off and or threatened the judge, which is why the judge very much changed his tune. And then theory number three, which kind of bakes into all of this, is could some of the secret investors have been government officials themselves? This would explain why the government would be bullied into dropping the case because they're protecting their own. It was a government real estate deal with Mauricio and his partner in the first place. So this could explain why they were so emboldened to allegedly defraud the U.S. government. Is the call coming from inside the house? Was this an inside job? Because in my opinion, this flop, this 180 on the case doesn't make sense. I don't think that a fraud lawsuit that was brought on by the U.S. government randomly falls apart, randomly is now frivolous because the plaintiff can't produce some text messages. Doesn't make any sense. And I also, you guys know, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in conspiracy. I don't think it's a coincidence that the moment it was about to be made public, the name of these secret investors, within a week's time, because the article I was reading from Radar Online was at the end of November. We are mid-December. That's with, within one to two weeks time, a four, and this is important, this lawsuit has been going on for four years. So over the course of four years, the U.S. government and the judge believed that this was a serious case of fraud, believed that this case was a serious case to continue. But in the course of two weeks, when the secret investors' names are about to be made public, all of a sudden, now the case is frivolous. All of a sudden, the plaintiffs can't provide text messages. And this is actually isn't true because they did provide text messages. Oh, I just remember now. I wish I would have found them. They did provide text messages. The side that wasn't providing text messages from previous um, 
articles was Umansky's side. They were saying, oh, we got new phones and we lost all our we lost all of our conversations and blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? So I think it went down one of two ways with baked in. Could some of the secret investors be government officials? Because I this is what I really think happened in my conspiracy theoretical mind. I think that the secret investors paid off Sam Hakeem and uh, Adel Segal and maybe even like the government secretly paid them off to dismiss the case with prejudice. I think that the judge, once he understood all of the players and all the implications, probably got a little shooketh and was like, okay, I don't want to really be a part of this. I don't really want to sign up to take on these people. So let's just say, yeah, it's frivolous and let's drop it. And I do think that some of the investors are either just very powerful, ruthless people who maybe have things on people or are very powerful, or maybe government officials themselves. But I do not think, and this has nothing to do with how I feel about Kyle or Mauricio. I don't know these people. (laughs) You know, these are just my fun theories based on a reality show. So my opinion on this is nothing personal. I I do not think that this case was dismissed because they were innocent. I think there's something deeper and more fishier going on because that's just common sense. I don't think that this case would have went on for four years without some validity to it. And I don't think that the judge would dismiss the case just because the plaintiff couldn't produce a couple of text messages. And why would the judge say, you need to think long and hard before you bring any more discovery to this case? So why would the judge say, you need to think long and hard before you bring any more receipts? I'm not saying the judge was threatening. I think the judge was warning. Like we just stepped into something we didn't mean to step into. Because it seemed like in the first article or the second article I read, the judge didn't know who the secret investors were. But it seems like after it was revealed, at least privately, the the ships turned. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's why I said this is very important because you remember, you always have to really think about what people say, especially lawyers, especially business people, especially narcissists, especially very strategic people, because what they say is actually important. So the lawyer said, he said specifically in his statement that his client did not pay Sam Hakeem a dime to settle his frivolous case. He did not say Sam Hakeem was not paid to to settle his case. Those are two very specific and very two different things. Do you understand? By him saying, well, my client didn't pay him, it doesn't mean that he wasn't paid by somebody else, which is why I think The secret investors got together and they said, listen, we're going to give you some money. You're going to drop this case and you're going to shut up and go away because you don't want the smoke that is coming for you if our names are made public. And then also don't forget the judge said before that the parties were working on settling the case um, in order to keep the names private. But if they did that on paper, then on paper, it would mean that Mauricio and Mauricio and the secret investors basically are admitting that they committed fraud, but without going to court and being found guilty. Like, okay, you know what? I committed fraud. Here's some money to go away. It's not a good look. It's just not a good look, right? And I think that these investors want to keep their names out of it and they want to keep their reputation out of it. And I think it's very telling that literally one to two weeks after we're talking about the investor names being made public, all of a sudden the case is miraculously tossed. Doesn't make any sense to me. Again, this is my conspiracy theory. These are my opinions and everything is alleged. But that's just how it snuffs out to me. Okay. So I want to know what you guys think. You know, put it down below. Do you think that it's a little bit too good to be true? 
that randomly after four years, after allegedly defrauding the U.S. government of $37 million, miraculously, Mauricio's case is all of a sudden frivolous and, you know, hinged on a couple of text messages. Okay. And then also, you know, or do you think, no, they didn't do anything wrong. You know, this guy was just out here suing suing him. The government was out here suing them for no reason. They didn't do anything wrong. Put it down below. And do you think that Mauricio's multiple lawsuits, because this is just one of many, has anything to do with him and Kyle separating? Is this a Erica Jane Girardi moment where let's just say that, you know, we're separating, even though I do think that tension between them seems really, really real. Um, but she's basically just like, I'm tired of this and I want to protect my money. I want to protect my assets. I want to protect my children. I want to protect my property. You know, she even said in this last um, episode, and we'll get to it when we do a deeper dive onto the episode, she said that her friend, that her best friend, Lorene, in her will was over her money and her children, not her husband. I don't know if it was if we both pass, but she said if she passed, she wants her money and her kids to go to her best friend. So, hey, put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. And before you do that, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's move on to our second deep dive of the day, you guys. Okay. So this one is all about Morgan Wade breaking her silence after Dorit.